morning. Welcome to Bowling Green Presbyterian Church. Uh, Lisa remains on vacation until Thursday. Uh, please, if you have any uh, pastoral emergencies, let your uh, shepherd, elder shepherds know. Um, but Martin is back in town, so you probably can even call Martin if you need to. Um, look in your bulletin, and you'll see this beautiful, bright-colored form. And we need these filled out today. This is our deadline for getting our pumpkins, so if you want to join in in the fun of the pumpkin carving, we ask that you please fill this out and order the pumpkin, and also let us know how many you want for the barbecue. Um, Andy Jackson is supplying the barbecue, so we need you to sign up to how many people will be eating. Um, the barbecue lunch is free. The pumpkins are $5, so if you don't get a pumpkin, still come and eat with us. Fellowship. Anytime we can get together and have fellowship is a wonderful thing. Also, you'll know the, notice the insert that has the frog on it. Um, this is Faithfully Ridiculous Over God. And um, it is all that are invited, uh, ministers, elders, deacons, and musicians. Um, if you want to read this and fill this out, um, drop it in the offering plate, or else you can go online and register to um, go to this. Um, the worship committee is meeting today after worship uh, to discuss Advent and Christmas and maybe even um, Epiphany. And if you want to join the team, please come and join us. If you're a member of the team, we ask you to please come forward um, after church today. And on October 30th, we have a called congregational meeting that will take part, will be part of our worship service uh, for the purpose of electing church officers. Um, all the rest of the bulletin, or all the rest of the announcements are found in your bulletins. Are there, is there any announcement that needs to be made that's not in the bulletin? Okay, then let us worship the Lord.
as we gather together to worship you, Holy One. As we join in prayer at your footstool, Exalted One. As we unite our voices to praise you, Lover of Justice. As we tremble in the cleft of the rock, silently awaiting you, Merciful One. Let the earth shake in your praise, O um, Holy, or Most High. We extol your greatness, awesome God. Let us pray. God of power and might, help us to recognize the imprint of your love and mercy in our lives. Open our hearts to the love that we may grow in our faith and be strengthened in our witness to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. our sincere efforts to live in God's way that all too easily we slip off the path of the king of the kingdom trusting that God will answer our prayers and forgive us let us confess our sins as we pray together gracious God hear our prayers call us to treat all people equally we take sides and get favors chosen by your children we arrogantly assume what others are not to offer. Challenge to be an example of faith. We reveal our worst natures to our families and friends. Lord, forgive us. Open our hypocritical hearts to your healing touch of compassion and hope. As Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has given all of us, may we of us confidently, faithfully. Amen. Hear the good news. The one who created goodness and beauty is also the one who shows no partiality, but offers grace and forgiveness to all. 
Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. And now where you're sitting, let's all wave to everyone. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also to come forward and collect the um, quarters for heifer and our wrestling bags. Good morning, guys. Good morning. <laughs> All right. So, have you ever used one of these before? Yes. A name tag? They don't stick on very well, do they? No. Usually someone gives you your name tag, and you peel it off, and you put your name on it. So everyone knows your name. Exactly, John. So everybody knows your name. Why is it important that everybody knows your name? Exactly. So then what happens if your name tag falls off? What do you do? Make a new one. You make a new one. <laughs> <laughs> right, but you don't have your name on you, do you? People don't know who you are. You do have pretzels. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's not good. Okay. Okay. You like pretzels, but you don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, as Christians, guys, do we walk around with a name tag on that says that we're a Christian? Yes. We do? <laughs> do y'all do that? <laughs> How do they know we are, John? Because they know God. Because they know God. Bible, God tells us that we don't have to walk around with a name tag on that says we're a fr Christian because we don't. We don't. <laughs> because God, because people around us should know that we are Christian by our <coughs> fruits. Do you think God means the fruits that we eat? No. No. What kind of fruits does He mean? The fruits of the Spirit. Do y'all know the fruits of the Spirit? Just like the spirits and 
frozen too. <laughs> okay, well, what God talks about are the spirits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self control. And by there are nine. So God talks about the fruits of the Spirit and tells us that we should know, that people around us should know who we are because we are acting like God, right? Okay, can y'all pray with me? <laughs> Good morning, Lord, it's us again. Thank you for the many spirit, fruits of the Spirit you give us. And let us walk like you. So people know who we are without a name tag. Without a name tag. Amen. Amen. All right, are y'all ready? Let us pray. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word. Give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture today, it's usually a scripture that's used for, um, for Easter. But I found out on Tuesday that I was preaching today. And um, Lisa, um, I told Lisa, okay, I can preach on this, on something that, um, that uh, during Bible study, what was said, um, our, our teacher, um, she made the comment that if you want to meet Jesus, go low. And she was talking about going to the orphans and the widow and, and the poor and, and you know, downtrodden and to taking care of them was a way of meeting Jesus. But whenever she said that, I automatically pictured going to your knees. And so I said, okay, I can do that. And Lisa was saying, well, you need to do one that has your hymns because people like that. So I said, okay, we'll do what a friend, I'll do what a friend we have in Jesus. And she said, no, you need to do in the garden. So, <laughs> so I should have had her write the sermon, but she didn't do that. <laughs> so, um, Whenever I chose in the garden, um, I looked to see what scripture was used, and this is the basics of the scripture that was used. And so in John chapter 20, verses 11 through 16, now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look inside the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, and one at the foot, and they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They had taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize who Jesus was. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she asked, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned to him, crying out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. This is the word of the Lord. i 
who wrote this song, and um, he talks about it, he, he explains this song that he was in his photography room where he had his photography equipment and his um, organ, and he says he reached for his Bible and decided to read his favorite chapter, which was John chapter 20, and after reading this, he kind of fell into kind of like a sleep, and um, in this dream that he had, he was entering into a garden, and it was a long, windy path, and there were olive branches on either side of the um, path. And he realized that he wasn't alone in this garden, that there was a woman in this garden. And she was dressed all in white, and she was speaking to someone. And when she heard the voice, or when he heard this voice of who she was speaking to, he immediately knew that she was speaking to Jesus. And he was able to be a witness to this relationship, to this friendship that they had as they walked and they talked. When he woke up, this song immediately came to him. The words immediately came to him and he wrote them down as quickly as they came. And then later that night, he wrote the music to this song. And it says, I come to the garden alone alone, just you and just Jesus, in this peaceful morning atmosphere before all the craziness of the world breaks into our silence. It says, while the dew is still on the roses, we come to Jesus and we talk to him like he is our friend. Jesus needs to be your BFF, your very best friend. It's a voice I hear falling on my ear the Sam of God discloses. Isn't that beautiful? This to me is one of the most picturesque songs 
that we sing, the imagery in this song. I love this song. So we go to Jesus in the early morning and we speak to him and we open ourselves up to the words that Jesus wants to say to us. It says his, the verse, the refrain is, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other will ever know. He walks with me and he talks with me. That's a beautiful image to picture ourselves walking and talking with Jesus as he's our friend. And we see ourselves in this beautiful garden um, and Jesus who loves us and who is walking and talking with us. Wouldn't we all love to be in that garden, love to have that kind of relationship? And he tells us that I am his own, that we are his own. He claims us as members of his family, as brothers and sisters in Christ. We are in Jesus' family. We are his brothers and sisters. And the joy that we share as we tarry there, none other will ever know. It's hard to explain when you have a close relationship with Jesus. It's hard to explain that relationship to others. Um, because it's hard to explain the joy that you feel unless they have also experienced, unless they know what it's like to be that close to Jesus or to have a relationship with Jesus to have him performing miracles in your own life. And you know, it's just hard to explain that to someone who's never experienced God or never experienced the love that Jesus has and the love of his family that we have for one another. And then the next verse, and I love this, is my, probably my favorite verse. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing. And the melody he gives with me, gives to me within my heart is ringing. So here you are. You're in the garden and you're hearing the, vo hearing the birds. Or you sit out in the morning and you're having your cup of coffee and you're hearing the birds. And the birds hush when they hear Jesus speak. If the birds took the time to quietly listen to what Jesus had to say, why wouldn't we? When Jesus speaks to us, we need to be quiet. We need to listen to what the, Lord, what the word of God has to say. In our Bible study, Christine McLaughlin says of the voice that it was a voice, it's a voice that you hear in your head and it makes you wonder, huh, where did that come from? Eunice um, Burden wrote, how can I hear God's voice? Through someone else, through the Bible. It is the Holy Spirit working to attract your attention. Sometimes God will use a strong conviction in your heart or urging you, urging you to do something, or it's to help you to understand what you have read in the Bible. Sometimes you have a thought that comes into your head that surprises you, and you think, where did that come from? It's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Um, like whenever Lisa said, who's preaching on Sunday? And I was like, I guess it's me. <laughs> so we tried to find someone else. The Lord kept saying, it's going to be you. So here I am. <laughs> the still small voice in our head is there when we communicate with Jesus. It's him talking to us, and we just need to listen. And then the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. Music. We hear music, and music makes us feel. It makes us remember. It makes us happy, sometimes sad. And music talks to the soul. Bruce Springsteen, I'm going to quote him today. The best, he says, the best music is essentially there to provide you with something to face the world with. And that's what I believe, that these old hymns that we still sing, and I, I honestly, I talked to my sister and she goes to a, a church that no longer sings the old hymns. 
And she said, sometimes the songs that they sing, they don't even repeat them, but about two or three times a year, perhaps. And so it's nothing like what we were raised on if you were raised in a church, and you know these hymns. And they bring you comfort. Um, I was at, with mom and dad one day. I'd taken them to take them to the doctor's appointment, and I received a call from Keith. And so I stepped outside and took the call. And then whenever mom and dad came out, mom's like, "You know what's going on? What happened?" And I said, "Well, Keith just got laid off from his job. The um, portion of Duke Power that he worked worked for, they sold it off, so he was without a job." And she was. Like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And honestly, the first thing that came to my head was the hymn, God Will Take Care of You. Through every day or all the way, God will take care of you. And that, to me, I feel sorry for those who don't have this background that can't pull on those kind of hymns because I wasn't worried. I knew God would take care of us. He's going to find a way. That he's going to find another job. And he did. And we were fine. And it's the comfort of the music that God puts in us, that Jesus puts in us, the melody that he puts in our souls that can give us the comfort through these old hymns. Or even if, if you listen to the newer things and you listen to them you know, more than just once or twice a year, then you know, perhaps you can draw on that kind of music to give you the peace that these old hymns give to me. And then on the last verse, it says, I stay in the garden with him, though the night around me is falling. He bids me to go through a voice of woe. His voice to me is calling. Think about this. We started out, for those of us who sing this song and for the author who wrote this song, we started out with the dew on the roses. And now here we are, the night around us is falling. So we've spent the entire day with Jesus, speaking to Jesus as our friend. There are times that don't you wish you could be, and I wish I could have been, one of the disciples of Jesus who followed him around during the days and listened to what he was saying. In our Bible study, she also talks about um, rabbis. And um, you know, Jesus became a rabbi when he turned 30. And she talks about how most rabbis would go to the temple and they would teach and followers would come and start following them. Where Jesus went out and he put, chose his followers. He went out and he found James and John and the others. And um, he, so he called his followers. And she said, uh, she often says in our studies that not only do you want to follow your rabbi, but you want to be just like him. And don't we all want to be just like Jesus? And she said they would follow their rabbi so closely that the dust from their shoe, that from the rabbi's shoe, you want it to fall onto your shoes because you want to follow that closely with your rabbi and you want to be that much like your rabbi. In order for us to walk that closely with Jesus, we need prayer and we need giving, and we need reading of the scripture. We need to open ourselves up through prayer and through reading the scriptures so that we can hear the voice of Jesus. Also in this past week, they talked about the early, she, well, throughout the study, she's talked about the early church. And in this past week at our Bible study, they talked about, she talked about how the early church was scattered and um, unlike today, whenever someone's 100 miles away, we can still communicate with them immediately, live, on, um, with telephone calls or emails or whatever. We can talk to one another, Zoom calls. Um, but back then, they couldn't. So in order to stay as a community, they decided that they would pick three times a day when they would say the Lord's Prayer. And everyone would stop what they were doing, and they would say the Lord's Prayer. And so we challenged the class that if you want to participate, at 9 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, and at 3 o'clock, many said that they would set their alarms at these times, and they would stop what they were doing, and they would say the Lord's Prayer. Now, Christy admitted that she didn't like to be interrupted. When she was working on something, she's a college professor, 
and she also has um, some other um, organizations that she works with. And when she's doing her work, she doesn't like to be interrupted. But she said the first day that she did this, it was pretty exciting to know that everyone else was joining at the same time and saying the Lord's Prayer. And the next day, it was still kind of like, you know, exciting to do. And then after like the fourth day, it became an interruption that she had to be like, okay, I've got to stop. I've got to do this. And, um, but it was a time when they knew that they were all doing this at the same time. And it was a community praying the Lord's Prayer. The Jews did this back before Jesus. Their prayer that they, their prayer that they used was in Deuteronomy. And I can't, it's, I can't quote you the exact uh, place where it was, but they too said at nine o'clock and three o'clock, they would say the same prayer. They would stop what they were doing and they would say this prayer. And so we're asking that, I'm asking that if you want to participate, and you don't have to, to uh, set a reminder on your phone and at nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, and three o'clock, stop for just a few seconds. It doesn't take long to say the Lord's Prayer. And join together in saying, saying the Lord's Prayer. And open yourself up during this time. And allow yourself to hear the voice of Jesus speaking to you. In a few weeks, we are going to have um, Stewardship Sunday. And you're going to be given pledge cards. But you're also going to be asked to join a committee. I've never had a committee say they have too many members. So, I'm going to ask that at this time, when you're saying the Lord's Prayer, open yourself up and ask the Lord to guide you to a committee to be able to use the talents that God has given you and drive you to a committee to listen to him, to choose a committee to which one you should join. Because I know we would all love to have the help. Uh, Jesus says that faith without works, without action, is dead. I mean, John, excuse me, James wrote that, that faith without action is dead. So it, we love having you in the pews, and we hope more of you will come and join us in our pews. But we also need workers. We also need help um, in many of our committees. So please take this time to joyfully consider working for the Lord. Amen. If you would all stand now and let us um, affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed, which is written in your hymnal. I'm not sure what page. 35. 35. I wanted to say that, but I wasn't sure. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Um, we have prayers and con uh, we have uh, concerns and celebrations. Um, we want to continue this week to pray for Laura Habernick, <laughs> which is Jane's youngest sister. And um, um, Martin showed me a picture of her, and she looks just like Jane. Or Jane just looks like her, whatever. But anyway, beautiful woman. And uh, we want to pray for her family as um, her memorial service was on Friday. Um, but like I said, this was just, it was a shock to the family, and so it's going to take a while to absorb this shock. Um, so we ask that you continue to pray for them. Um, are there any other concerns? That was the only one that we had. Yes? Rent Clinton. Okay. Becky? Anna Bennett, the family of Anna Bennett. Okay. Are there any others? We want to continue to remember uh, George and Nina. Any others? Okay, and, to, and we also have our celebrations, and today is Matthew Jones's birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> He's up there, everyone say happy birthday. <laughs> and Johnny's birthday is on Friday. Um, and anniversaries we have this week are Debbie and Danny Jackson's and John and Kaylin Petty's. Uh, let us join together in prayer. Almighty Father, thank you for this day which you have made. Help us to rejoice in it and in all the days that are gifted to us. Provide for us just what we need for today and lift the anxieties of tomorrow. Pray for the leaders of our world, our nations, our states, our community, that they would heed your will for our lives and res respond accordingly. Help us to make decisions that benefit your people. Help them to make decisions that benefit your people for your purpose and not for their own. Our hearts are filled, O oh Lord, with your joy and peace. You have placed, imprinted, you have placed your imprint on us and challenged us to be your people in thought, word, and in deed. In gratitude, we come to you this day bringing shouts of joy as well as cries of sorrow. We are concerned about so many of our friends and brothers and sisters in Christ who are afflicted with illness of many kind, those who mourn, who feel lost and alone, and who wonder where you are. Surround them with your merciful presence. Likewise, gracious God, we shout with joy at many of the blessings that we have, you have poured upon our lives and into the lives of our family and our friends. Our hearts rejoice at the delight they feel. Help us to understand that these blessings are your wonderful gifts of joy for each of us. Help us to strive more to see your blessings in our lives amidst all the noise. Living God, move among us and awaken us to your loving presence. When we lose our way and put our confidence in our own passions, our own wisdom, call us back to you. Remind us that our very identity is dependent on your abiding mercy. Show us how to walk in steadfast faithfulness, follow in the path of justice and goodness in our daily lives. Bless these gifts given today and this week, your tithes and our offerings. Use them to bring healing and hope to your people. Multiply them so that they may pour out your blessings on all your children, trusting that we will empty our hearts, our lives, and our treasures in meeting the needs of those around us. May our days be filled with joy and hope as we share the good news of the abundance life that comes from following Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. another good hymn and that one's not very old it's 1984 I looked <laughs> in the garden was 1912 when it was written just FYI um, now we part in the fellowship of God our Father as we go remember in the goodness of God you were born into this world 
By the grace of God, you have been kept all day long, even until this hour. By the love of God, fully revealed in the face of Jesus Christ, you are being redeemed. Amen. Amen. 